Great. It's starting record though. That's good. Recording. It's a good sign. Suck. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good, mate. It's good to talk to someone who who's got the same accent as me. <laughs> I, I interviewed someone the other day. They were from Leicester, I think, and uh, they said, no. "Oh, he's all right, mate." And I said, "I don't speak like that, mate." No. Uh, this is how normal people talk, right? Yeah, of course. Even yeah. though you're in the north, I, I can see that you've not um, you've not taken on the accent yet. I haven't. I've resisted. I've I've started calling people love. Yeah, you that's know. not too bad though. People down south do that. But you can't say love, Aww. can you? You can't say love to women now. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. You, Depends on the context. I, I I get worried about saying anything, and you know, well, op- opening doors for women. Are you allowed to do that? Yeah, you can. You can. You don't want to start with this militant fem- feminist though. On that, like, like this might go around down a road that you don't want to go down. <laughs> 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 so let me just let me just try something. I also want to say five, four, three, two, one. We're live. I've always wanted to do that on my show. Oh, there, there you it, go. You've done it, it now. It, it means absolutely nothing because we're not live. It's literally just me. <laughs> no. It's just it, us. There's no producer. This is I am the producer. This is it. Yeah. Um yeah, great. It's it's lovely to see you. It's been such a long time. I've been keeping up with your your social media and uh and you seem to have been a, a, a juggernaut of comedy. It, I could see more shows coming and your yeah. following was just getting bigger and bigger. And just quickly, my wife said, Who are you interviewing today? And I said, It's Sook from Grave's End. She goes, Oh, yeah. the comedian. She goes, Oh, I'll listen to that one. And I'm telling you, literally oh. She 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 doesn't really listen to many of my shows, right? But she goes, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm going to listen to that one. She is a big fan. I've told you this before. Yeah, I'm, you have. How is she? She's very good. She's very good. She's stressing out about um, becoming a teacher to the children. Oh, yeah, and of she, course. So she's now homeschooling and uh, completely obsessed with it now. As what she, she you know, she's right. completely obsessed with it. But yeah, she's good, and she's going to really enjoy uh, watching and listening to the show. Um, which it's a it's a it's a real shame. Like I said, you 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 seem to be on this sort of uh, journey of you know uh, getting more and more success. And you was on your yeah. tour, and I could see you everywhere online. And then uh, then COVID nineteen. I know. I mean, uh, no one saw that, no one saw that one coming, right? So well, at least I didn't mess up. I mean, that's something. At least it wasn't something I did. Yeah, I, um, could, I think I agree. It wasn't your fault. uh yeah it's weird isn't it I think um a lot of my friends that I'm talking to had said that they were just getting their can I swear on this by the way absolutely the more the better actually great okay because they were saying look we were just getting our shit together and then this happened and Mm. I felt I felt a little bit like I was getting my shit together on the career front Mm. but personally between you and I and, and the listeners, I feel like, you know, when, when you're on a bit of a trajectory, you're going, you're going, you're going, you're not really kind of taking care of yourself. You're not, you know, you're trying to do as much as you can, but you're not giving, you know, I hadn't had a break since um, like the end of August, mm. beginning of September was the last mm. time that I had some time off. So I was like, by the time COVID hit, I was already kind of running on fumes, mm. to be mm. honest. And um because I didn't have Christmas off either because I was touring and it's all mm-hmm. fantastic and it's all lovely but I think my life was really out of balance mm-hmm. um, so, and now obviously it's gone all the other way and there's no bloody work and now all I'm doing is resting yeah we're literally on a, a life of seesaws right we're, we're, the know, other, exactly. we're the other end but so <laughs> you, you said you was working and working and working and uh, I knew you had that passion in you to sort of kickstart your career again because I remember the first time we spoke to each other yeah. um, and you really did you know, yeah, you really, it all happened. Yeah, it, it absolutely did, and it was fantastic watching that because I remember having that conversation with you, and at that mm. time it was just goals, wasn't it? It was just dreams and things yeah. In, yeah, in the horizon, you know. Um, yeah. So this COVID hits, and especially for someone like you, an entertainer, mm. um, stand up. You know, you you obviously can't do stand up now. Uh, yeah. So have you been using this time to write? And I mean, can you find uh, comedy? No. Can you find comedy in a global pandemic? (laughs) I'm sure some people can. I think for me, the way that COVID really... Well, firstly, I had the virus um, in March. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, so so firstly, I was ill for a really long time. And then we went into lockdown and I thought, 
oh, it'll be a couple of weeks and it'll be like the flu. Do you remember when people were saying, oh, it's just like the flu? And so I thought, oh, well, if it's like the flu, then, you know, I might be a bit tired for a bit and a bit run down and then I'll get better. But it on, it took weeks and weeks and weeks and my mm. breathing wasn't OK and I was so tired. Um, I couldn't do anything. Um, so the first few weeks of lockdown was that, was getting mm. over that. And also getting to terms with the fact that, you know, because obviously the situation changed at such a rapid point. So I'm mm. thinking, all right, well, well, we'll cancel the shows for, you know, March, April and May. But, you know, mm. we'll be back by June. You know, that's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah. oh, you know, in June, we might, you know, my, my tour will, will my tour will carry on and then we'll just and, go into autumn. And, 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 we, and, we, and we was trying to organise something. Um, yeah, I was of come- course. <laughs> You were going to come to Lee and to the wardrobe, oh, no. yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I know. that's what I mean about plans. There were things, f- things coming along. I, I had an exhibition coming up later this year, photography. I was oh. going to come and see, and, and it's just gone. Just yeah. like that, you know, that one. Yeah. And for someone like you um, who has to plan far in advance, you know, you have to o- yeah. organise the shows, the tickets, the people are, mm-hmm. you know, they spent their money. It must be quite yeah. hard for you to to build yourself up because I've seen you on some of your um, stories on in, uh, on social media. You kind of build yourself up to go on stage. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, and so yes. uh, this, this is a massive uh, sort of impact on your career, at least. You know. So. Yeah. I mean, it's all, you know, you know what it's like when you work in a creative industry that there's there's zero stability anyway. You know, there's very little security. So I was kind of feeling very grateful to be in a place where I was like, you know, this is my tour. And then I've got, you know, other gigs that I'm doing. So I was kind of all right up until the end of this year, pretty much mm-hmm. like November, December time. I was like, for the first time in my career, I can not sit back, but I can don't have to worry so much because I know I've got work coming up, which is very rare. Um, you know, for a lot of people um, in our industry. So I think it just felt a bit like having the rug pulled from beneath you when it happened. Mm. And when um, I was just about to go on stage and they pulled the show, I was in Coventry at the Belgrade and they pulled the show five minutes before I was about to go on. Mm. And I, and that was awful. Like I, that really kind of hit me in a way that I didn't expect it to, you know, I think the shock of it just stayed with me for about a week Mm. because, you know, I was getting quite used to gigging all the time and, you know, and I was really enjoying it. And I got to a place with my, um, with my stand up where, you know, I was really owning it and I was kind of really finding my voice and, you know, I was really loving connecting with people. I was getting a lot from it. Um, and it felt like I'd kind of reached the next level of, you know, confidence with it. So yeah, to be honest, you know, I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, you know, acting work, obviously it's my other career is, you know, production work is halted on stuff. Stand up comedy, who knows what the live comedy scene is going to be like, you know, whether that's going to, we're, we're hoping to kind of um, continue the tour in autumn, you know, so we've postponed it. Um, but we don't know, you know, are people going to want to go and sit in theatres with 300 other people? Like, you know, mm. are we going to have to have one seat free? And, you know, and I mean, which I'd quite like, actually, if I went to a show, I'd quite like to have a seat at the side of, you know, I quite like yeah, that. I don't, and, um, like, and cinemas, I don't like people sitting next to me. No, I don't, I really don't like it. So I'd be really, I mean, it's terrible from a business perspective, but, you know, <laughs> I, yeah. I think I'd quite like to have a bit of space. Also, I'd quite like everybody to stay like six feet away from me at all times. Yeah. I mean, that would be that would be really, really is, there, is, there, is there a part of um, you that that enjoys this sort of um, there, lock, there, lockdown a, I, I do <laughs> there's a there's a small part of me that sometimes does but like fleeting moments there's sometimes where it just feels like oh it's just a quiet time for comedy mm. I haven't got much coming up and then I'm like oh it just feels like that and then you remember and it all kind of like comes crashing mm. down but um I do actually quite like going to the supermarket if people stay six feet away from me. I think we should do that at all times anyway, because I just get carry that on. Yeah, carry yeah, that let's, on. Yeah, let's let's continue that. Let, let's let that be the big lesson. But I think, you know, now I'm in a position where I'm kind of going, acting's off or you know, off the, you know, kind of you can take that off the off the board or off the whatever, off the plate. I don't know, I'm mixing up metaphors. Comedy's off. Writing, sure I can do bits and bits and pieces, but now I'm like what do I do career wise Mm. you know when will this recover do I need to retrain do I need to kind of you know think in a slightly different way so so yeah there's a lot to kind of think about but I'll be honest the first 
five or six weeks of lockdown, I was not in a good place. Mm. You know, I was not, I was not okay mentally. I was not coping with being cooped up indoors. You know, the fear of it, the fear of having it, passing it on to my parents, you know, thankfully they're okay. The fear of kind of leaving the house, you know, and, and the fear of also not knowing, like not knowing is, I'd rather know what the big scary thing is than not mm. know. Because mm. then at least you know what you're dealing with. Whereas this, it was like, you know, always changing. So the first five or six weeks that happened. And then, you know, I, I think how for me, the hardest thing is always my mind. Whatever mm. situation I'm in, my mind is always like my biggest kind of enemy in a way. Like that's what I've got to mm. try and beat or control or, you know, get on the side. And, and once I kind of started feeling like little things of inspiration coming in, you know, little sparks here and there, I was like, I'm going to be all right. Mm. I just needed a break. Mm. so you, sorry that's a really long answer to your question oh no 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 it's very interesting because i know i know at one point you started strength training yeah yeah and, yeah, yeah. I did, and yeah. i i i know exactly how you feel when you you had to stop because of this oh my COVID-19 gosh. and i i'm a I, i'm a gym guy right and i need the yeah. gym for myself my own mental sanity really mm-hmm. because i get a bit ratty if i don't work out and yeah. things, things get a bit too much for me Mm. That, that's kind of my sort of time to be on my own and like working out. It makes me feel good afterwards mentally, definitely. Mm. And I know you was really into it and, yeah. um, you know, deadlifts and uh, military yeah. presses. I love uh, it. I never, I honestly never thought I'd say I really miss the gym. Yeah. I never thought I'd be that guy. But like you, when I'm there, it's just me and the bar. Mm. Like there's nothing else. I don't, I never take my phone with me kind of like, you know, in the gym, I always leave it in my bag, I always leave it in my locker. You know, I, it was never about other people. It was never about taking selfies in the mirror. It was never about, you know, I want to be a certain size or summer bodies, whatever the hell that is. You know, for me, it was always about mental health for me. And also, uh, you're partly using it as a coping mechanism, but partly as an experiment to see what my body is capable of. Mm, mm. Yeah. Um, and so I was on a really interesting journey. Definitely with that. And I saw that and I was really happy for you, you know, and uh, I, I remember in the early days you said, I can't go to the gym and you was really gutted because you, you, I think you was, you was really enjoying what you was doing. And yeah, I, would, yeah. I would definitely recommend for anyone, for me, I, I, I don't know if I've told you this before, I remember I used to drink quite a bit. I used to smoke yeah. and I used to mm. do some other um, extracurricular activities. And anymore. Uh, and uh, say no more and uh, even though it's my show I could say it but I won't (laughs) but um, but the gym and fitness that's the one thing that helped me the most Um, just to have that focus and that consistency of going Mm. and I'm lucky because I've got a gym in my house and just by yeah I know I was just about to say that I seem to remember seeing that on your social media post you've got a nice little setup going yeah and I'm very annoying because I keep posting pictures especially people (sighs) at this time I'm thinking you know I knew there was a reason I muted you (laughs) yeah. <laughs> but yeah and so I, so that's another thing you didn't have that outlet no more as well you know not yeah. only your comedy uh your acting your creative work you know which is an outlet mm. for you obviously and then mm. this as well so I, and also on a really basic level no income absolutely yeah you know so yeah so also no income coming in so you're, you're kind of like it's your basic needs as well that that kind of aren't being taken care of mm. so at the moment, you know, I ask people usually, so what are your plans now? And you mm. don't know, do you, at the moment, what you're going to be? No, not at all. I think the way I'm, you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day is I am I know everybody says, oh, I'll take it each day as it comes. And I, I really, I think that's so simplistic. Mm. You know, that's so, it really annoys me because I'm like, you're kind of reducing you know, something like mental health or whatever, just to like one pithy little quote, like, you know, Oh, take yeah. you as it comes. But honestly, I don't think I ever understood what that meant because as an anxious person, you're constantly thinking about the future and catastrophizing about the future. Whereas we're in the middle of a catastrophe. So my brain's like, Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it's actually the worst thing that could happen has happened. So um yeah, yeah I'm all right now. That's <laughs> I've well, not got anything to worry about, you know, because this is it's it's happening because actually this yeah. is interesting because I said that people with O C D and anxiety were more mm. prepared for this yeah. and say the, yeah. the, the lay person because they were kind of that's kind of how they lived anyway yeah worrying yeah. about these events and absolutely and all my years of depression and stuff you know um which thankfully I don't suffer from anymore but like all my years of depression meant that uh, I know how to take care of myself 
in mm -hmm. in that moment like I know it will pass whereas I think and also I'm an introvert so I'm not that mad on other people anyway mm -hmm. um you know I can only really do that in, in like in small doses you know <laughs> yeah. and uh which seems like a really weird thing to say if, if you do what I what I do and you're performing hundreds of people like you know four or five times a week but a lot of kind of comedians are and um I think I think in a way I'm quite well equipped and I think you know, saying this to a friend, I said, I don't, I, this sounds a bit weird, but I feel like everything that I've experienced in life up until now has equipped me really well for this situation. Mm. You know, used to spending time on my own, mm. you know, I've, I've kind of dealt with mental health stuff where I'm like, this isn't the worst I felt mentally. So I know I'll be fine. You know, um, I can cook, you yeah. know, <laughs> there's yeah. always, there's always, you know, I've always been quite, um, uh, you know, my family as well. And I think a lot of other Asian families have always been very aware of having enough food in the house. So you never kind of run low anyway. Yeah. You know, so all of the, all of those things, you know, really, I'm an only child, so I'm really good at spending time on my own. I can kind of occupy myself really easily. I don't really get bored. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I love learning and all those things. So I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, if I was an introvert, if I was an extrovert, you know, I'd be fucked. But, you know. Yeah. But I'm fine. I'm kind that, of all right. That, really. that is our Instagram post of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Put that one up, Maya Angelo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean to sound like, you know, I'm also kind of very aware that lots of people have it really bad at the moment. You know, there's, you know, a lot of people that are in, you know, a really difficult situation and, you know, are kind of aren't being helped by the government or whatnot. I don't have any kind of support, you know, but I think if you're kind of in our position it, it's you know you're what I'm trying to say is like it, it can still be difficult like it's that it's a different kind of difficulty you know and maybe your basic needs are being met because your housing's okay and you know you've got food and stuff but you know I think you know if you've never had to deal with it and you've had like quite a kind of you know cushy life <laughs> up until now mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that are kind of really suffering and and really Really, I think, you know, for the first time for a lot of us, we don't have a distraction mm. in our life anymore. You know, and one of the things that my kind of big light bulb moment came about, you know, two weeks into lockdown, where like the first week, even though I wasn't well, I was like clearing the garden. I was like weeding. I was like, we're going to build a raised bed. We're going to do this. I'm like decluttering, you know, you know, giving, you know, taking the net curtains off and, you know, and all, you know, all that kind of dusting the big light. I was doing all that stuff because I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to stay busy. I'm going to use this time. I'm going to stay busy. And then I just stopped. I kind of hit a wall when I realized that I don't have a distraction anymore. Mm. You know, my social life, my career, all of that can serve as a distraction to what is really going on. Mm. Mm. And I think when we give ourselves oh, one week off a year, you know, if you get one week, two weeks annual leave or whatever, we never really get to reset and recalibrate and, and really kind of reflect on what's actually going on with us, mm. you know, because we're kind of too burnt out. You're kind of you're kind of just exhausted. Whereas I think now this is why time I think has taken on a really funny kind of rhythm now, hasn't it? You know, Absolutely. it's really, you know, you know, I'll, I'll wake up quite early and I'm like, the next time I look at my watch or something, I'm like, Oh, it's two o'clock. Like, what, what happened? Like, when did that happen? Yeah. And, I keep getting you know, what bloody day is. Yeah. And it's uh, weird. Cause you don't, you know, and all of those things that you kind of rely on have just kind of crumbled and, you know, and, and I'm a big one for like wanting to be in control and stay in control and being a perfectionist. And a lot of my anxiety comes from, the fact that if I can't control a situation, like I'm a hundred times better than I used to be. But I mean, if like me, like planning is your kind of coping mechanism, mm. I mean, you're re probably really suffering <laughs> right yeah. now, you know, because Absolutely. I, I, you know, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing there to kind of grab onto, you know, there's nothing really there to, to kind of go, Oh, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, got that to look forward to next week or next month. No, or whatever. Exactly. So that's kind of interesting. So I, I, from what your answers there, would you say your stand up for that 20 minute set that you have mm. sucks in control of the, oh, the that's a, <laughs> you that's know, interesting. He sucks in control of the scenario, the environment, uh, yeah. the, the stage, and really, it there is no other factors in stand up, it's, it's you and the mic and yeah. the audience. I mean, you can't really control an audience because you might, you know, get some drunken idiots or you might get people, you know, coming in late or you might, you know, might get kind of, you know, they might cut out or whatever. So it's on your terms though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I was definitely getting to a place where I felt more empowered in stand up doing that. I don't think I've always felt like that. 
Right. I always felt like, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing and I feel a bit unsure of myself. I don't know whether that's ever come across, but like now I never. definitely feel no, like no. No. <laughs> I no, feel a bit honest, more grounded. You know, you, you never come across like that. I mean, the first time I think I saw you was Woodville Halls and... Uh, Oh, I, you, you were there. That was I, my very first gig. I was there, you know. Yeah. I, followed, I followed your career from the start. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would never have thought that, you know, this was your first gig, use confidence. Yeah. And when it's later on, I found out, you know, sometimes you, you, you had issues with your mental health. It's all a shock. Mm. It was a shock to me. And uh, you always seemed like you was in control and, you know. and um, I mean, we, we did a lot in real life as well though you know we, we're good at putting a face on and part of being on stage is putting a face on yeah you know and um so yeah but I, yeah I guess I've always I've always hidden it really well mm. um which is great for on stage probably not so great for your for your personal life for normal life no, hide, hide, no. hide what you're going through yeah yeah so I'll I tell you what I did the other day I've been watching um Black Mirror and oh I'd, yeah! And I'd completely forgotten this. And I there's there's an episode where John Hamm's in it, uh, <laughs> oh, right gotcha. from Mad Men. And this, um, yeah. obviously, you know what I'm going to say, but for people listening, yeah, no, so he, he walks out of a coffee shop and he bumps into someone. He sidesteps, and the person sidesteps the, the same way as him. <laughs> sidesteps the other way, and it's bloody you. It is. It's bloody me. And it, and it My first came, telly job. Yeah, and it all came back to me. I said, "That's suck." And I rewind it, paused it, and I said, "Call my wife." I go, "Look, it's suck. she goes, what's it? She's on Black Mirror. <laughs> right, big, big fan she is." And I think, um, I mean, that was a cra- it was crazy seeing you on there. But you know, and I just wanted to ask, you yeah. know, John Ham is he is he really that handsome? Or was it camera work? Oh, he's disgustingly handsome. Like nobody should be that handsome. No. It should be illegal. Like there's no need for it. It's just rude. No, and like, it shouldn't be allowed so on. Att- <laughs> no, just no. Go away, John Ham. No, he's um. I mean, he's he. I I at the time when I got the call to do that for that job, I was binge watching Mad Men. So I was already in love with him and or Don Draper. And, um, and then that happened and I was like, I felt like I'd kind of conjured it out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and then I, I met him and I was just like, and he's, he's had that confidence that I think a lot of American actors have, you know, um, you know, incredible posture, like amazing posture. Like he's just, he looked he looked like he was just made out of marble. Do you know what yeah, I mean? He's he been chiselled like out. Statue. Isn't he? Yeah, and he so was just annoying. like and ev- everything he was wearing was just perfect, and you know, and he kind of shook my hand and he was like, "Hi, I'm John," and I was like, "I know who you are." I didn't say that, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I was like, "I know who you are." Um, and then I kind of did. I did. Oh my god! Do you want to hear the the most embarrassing, my most embarrassing John Hammond a- anecdote? Absolutely. So you got to remember, I was, uh, this was quite a few years ago now. It's like six years ago or something like that. So it was quite a while yeah. ago. So I, I'm not like the kind of gobby, outspoken woman that you, you see before you. But <laughs> I was, <laughs> and it was my first TV job. I'd never done telly. Wow. And I'd never learned about it in drama school because our drama school was like geared towards theatre. And um, so I had no idea. So you got all the cameras going on. There's all these people. And I'm like, I don't really know how to behave. And my anxiety, my mental health at the time was shocking. Like, I had mm. absolutely no idea that it was that bad. But it was so, so bad. Um, and then there's John Hamm. <laughs> and then there's loads of people, you know, in between takes, you have like, you know, um, wardrobe will come up to you and like tweak your coat or your scarf or whatever. Or makeup will come over, check, you know, check you're all all right. And, you know, you've got a bit of fluff in your coat, John, whatever. And um He's there, and I'm there, and, and I'm like, this is my one chance to impress John. I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, this is my one chance to impress John Hamm. Like, say something witty, say something like insightful. And the, <laughs> the only thing I could come up with was, there's an eighty percent chance of rain later, John. <laughs> it's Look, not the best chat line, is it? If that's not going to game. Fucking nothing is, all right. Do you know what? The worst thing was, he didn't even reply. He just looked up to the sky and then just looked back at his phone again. That was the could, worst thing. And then could, I was like, could have at least said, like, yeah, yeah exactly. Or, you you could bring some sesterage in weather, whatever. Um, yeah. But then I was like, what if I meet him in, like, I don't know, five years' time on, like, Graham Norton's couch or whatever, you know? And then I'm going to be like, oh, John, no. Like said, chance of rain. Oh, I don't know. It was awful. It was awful. It was so cringy. You got an anecdote um, on for Graham Norton, ready? I know. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but he could have looked but up no, to the sky and said, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, no. at, least, at least you know, go away, weirdo. 
Yeah. <laughs> All you wanted yeah, was, was a, a reaction, right? <laughs> That's what I wanted. I've gone off him now. I've yeah, gone good. Now. I actually, do you know what? And this is like, this is not because of that, but I've never been able to watch him on screen since. And I think it's because it reminds me of that moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually have not seen uh, the last series of Mad Men. So I don't even know how it ends. Yeah. Hey, 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 no spoilers. Everyone dies. You've been what put off by him. I'm being put off by him. Actually, I'm not going to watch yeah. now. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah, good. Out yeah. of process. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, John. Um, well, yeah, tell you bloody weather. I know. What, well, what, what was, the, what was, was like, the weather like though? What was it? Was it raining? Or? It was an eighty percent chance of rain later, and the it, only reason I knew that's because I'd seen it somewhere. Made, <laughs> made it worse. Well, let's forget John Ham now. Absolutely ruined. <laughs> that's my big question for today. Oh, sorry, mate. I wish but, I had uh, better news for you. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to meet meet you meet your uh, idols, right? Don't meet your heroes, yeah. No, no. So that was a great start for your acting career. I don't think we really mm. t- touched on that on uh, the first interview, and uh, okay. you've done you've done so much more since. Um, mm. So you said you was planning some other films and productions were going to start, and uh, yeah, you, you're kind of now in limbo land, right? Like everyone else, yeah. and um, yeah. Is there, is there any support from the government for creative artists out there? And um, Well, there's a part of me that doesn't want to take that support that's meant for people who are really financially struggling. You know, I mm. want to kind of acknowledge that I do live with my folks. You mm. know, I will, you know, I'm okay. I don't, you know, thank God this didn't happen five years ago when I was living in London and had like had to pay extortion or rent and stuff like mm. I, I wouldn't have been able to survive but mm. um so I don't want to kind of like dip into you know the hardship funds that have been set up for like performers and stuff there's a self-employment um I don't know fund or grant or something mm. that is kind of now being rolled out so you know we'll see I think they they give you like a a payment that covers like 80 percent of your income for three months mm which is wonderful, which is fantastic. So I've applied for that. But yeah, I think there are like bits and pieces for, you know, other actors and comedians and stuff. And, um, but I, yeah, I just, I, I'd feel a bit bad and, and yeah. taking that away from people I, who really need them. You know, I, I know they were talking about theatres reopening at some point and yeah. again, it could be, you know, you could be sitting two seats away from the, the person next to you. It's, yeah. it's going to be an odd experience. I don't know if life will be the same. I, I think I think that's the one thing that I think I feel I can say with great certainty it's life is never going to go back to the way it was before mm. which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing in terms of the way that we treat each other in terms of the way that we consume you know whether that's information or the food we eat or what we buy or the clothes we buy whatever you know mm. I think that's not necessarily a bad thing did you see the um, some of the some of the pictures that came out uh, sort of two weeks into the lockdown the world lockdown um the environment just changed yeah yeah amazing you know and uh, a- animals started coming out to uh, more residential mm. areas you could see the himalayas the smog mm. went from delhi and uh, yeah. we're going to ruin all that when we come back well this is the thing is i also know i think we know enough about humankind now to know that you know once this is over we're going to go back to our old shitty ways and yeah. you know there'll be the smog and there'll be the you know what have you but i you know I really hope that people do kind of at least learn one thing, you know, whatever their kind of own personal lesson is. Mm. You know, I really hope that people do come out of this maybe a bit more grateful for what they've got, Mm. you know, maybe a bit more grateful for the people in their lives, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, even little things like if people waste less food. Yeah. You know, that's like a huge, that's a huge issue. So I really hope that people kind of remember that, but, you know, who knows? We probably won't. We 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 won't. We no. won't. I think we can. I don't think. I don't think we're being pessimistic when we say that. I think that's no. just you know, be, nature. There'll be exactly. queues around McDonald's, you know, and Greg's. Well, McDonald's drive throughs have already opened. So, so yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, <laughs> but We've learned I, fuck all, right? Exactly. Well, well done, human race. <laughs> you co- collectively, worldwide, the greatest <laughs> brains in the world have learned fuck all. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> That's another Instagram post. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Look how much content we're getting. We're rolling it out, rolling it. <laughs> we're a machine. <laughs> <laughs> Motivational machine. So so at the mo- <laughs> so at the moment, obviously, 
um, show wise, not much is going on. So are you going to try mm -hmm. and utilize this um, social media phenomenon of live videos constantly? Uh, there seems to be a live video on every other right. hour at the moment. Um, I'm not a big fan of live. Them. No. I can't bear them. I'll do the odd one with people that I already know and that I really connect with, but I'm not just going to do a live where I'm like, oh, hey, guys, just going for a walk. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't do a Ask live Ask me anything. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, what do you want? To, I'm not bloody doing anything. No, I don't want to ask you anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, I've been really, really selective about what I choose to put out there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always really aware that if, I, if I'm doing something, I want it to be with the right person, somebody that I really vibe with. You know, I'm, I'm not kind of doing stuff for the sake of it. I think we're at a stage where we can really kind of see past all that. You know, Absolutely, I hope yeah. so, especially with Instagram. I, I'm, I'm really, I really hope that we're at a stage where we can see past the kind of the polished highlights of someone's life. You know, mm. I, I hope that we're kind of looking towards the more kind of authentic version of, yeah. you know, of people. So I don't really do the lives. I don't, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, why don't you do sketches? Why don't you do your comedy? And I'm like, no, mate, I've got a bloody tour to sell. Do you know, I'm not going to like yeah, go yeah. and give all my material online for who knows whatever to like rip it off somewhere. So, you know, I want, I want that live experience. And it's not that it's not going to come back. It's like it won't come back for a while. Mm. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I had a lot of anxiety about that in the first few weeks as I was like, why can't I, you know, I should be putting stuff out there. Everyone's putting stuff out there. You know, all of a sudden people have got like, you know, full on web series and stuff and they're filming stuff on their iPhones and what have you. And I was like, I was just sitting there like really trying really, really hard to like come up with ideas and go, oh, you know what? Oh, and I just couldn't really think of anything. And then I just went, I don't really want to do that. I really don't. I'd, I'd rather just, I'd rather roll around in broken glass. Like, I really <laughs> don't want to just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll, get some, I'll some watch it. TikTok. <laughs> we'll tag John Hammond. <laughs> yeah. See, I heard John, you fucker. Um, <laughs> it's I raining think... outside. <laughs> oh, God, and we can play the weather girls in the background. Exactly. Oh, my God. Perfect. Perfect. I can see it. Look at that vision. I still I think, him on you know, <laughs> But yeah, I just, you know, I'm writing. I finally got to um, yesterday. I sat down. I felt inspired, and I wrote for an hour. Wow. And that's not happened in ages. And that felt amazing. Yeah. You know, I did a poetry sh poetry workshop with Rupi Kaur. You know, the poet um, uh, at the weekend, and that was lovely. You know, that was like I wrote like eight pages of just free writing, just pure kind of stream, stream of consciousness stuff, and that was gorgeous. And it felt like that kind of unlocked something with me. You know, I'm having like really lovely. Um, conversations with fellow Punjabi women who are also creative and that's really nice you know mm. and I think you know if anything this has taught me it's like I what I was really missing and I was getting this uh, a fair amount from doing my tour because it was my show and I had mm. ownership over it you know and it was my story um what I wasn't really getting in my in my kind of social life or with friends and stuff, because you know what happens, you know, you're on a trajectory with your career and stuff, everything else just kind of goes out the window, you know. I, if I wasn't kind of on tour, if I wasn't gigging, I was kind of making sure mum and dad were okay and spending time with them. So left like little to no time for like friends. Um, I, what I, re I really missed that connection, you know, and mm. that's that kind of connection that I didn't really have, you know, mm. in the before times. Um yeah, and now um, I'm like, that's really important to me. Yeah, yeah, obviously. I mean, it, it, it is a it's a difficult time. I mean, in regards to your writing as well, um, how, your set that you you was doing before, I was going to say the set mm. you're doing now, but the one you was doing before, I I remember when you used, used to come out on stage and um, and it was a Malkid Singh song. Hey, Jim, my Lord. Yeah. And, you, and yeah. It, it, it was a great line. And, it, and you said, um, oh, you remember that song? And everyone would go, yeah. And you go, yeah, we're all fucking old, don't we? And, <laughs> and, I, yeah. and, I, and I remember, uh, see, I, I'm following your career. From I know, fucking, yeah. that's why I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at my own joke. I'm laughing because, you know, you, you, you're quoting me. Yeah, Back it's, at me. Yeah, it's, it, it is a good joke because it makes me laugh. It makes giggles because you think, yeah, we are old. Look how old that song yeah. is. And so that's kind of your observational style of, of comedy. Is yeah. that so? You take elements from your your life, basically, and you present it in a comedic way. Yeah. And uh, 
that's kind of the style you wanted because you don't do you ever pick up on politics or issues going in life or you try and keep it light-hearted I keep it to yeah I keep it to observational stuff and I don't really touch on politics because I don't have a lot I don't have that kind of brain which can make that funny and there's so many other comedians out there who can do it in a brilliant way and they're Mm. really really funny and I'm like I'm gonna leave it to them just like I don't do you know one-liners you know there's some comedians who are just great at one-liners they'll do that and then there's other comedians who are like I can't really tell a story so I just tell really short gags so I think it took a long time for me to kind of go to own that style of comedy and to go no this is my style and you know you kind of get asked you know sometimes they'll go oh do you want to do this comedy night it's a political thing where you talk about and I'm like no Mm. and I used to feel really bad about that because you know you in entertainment in general you're kind of like you've got to be everything to everyone at all times you know, take, you've got to be all, good at take all the gigs take all the gigs yeah, yeah. exactly but I'm not, I'm not I can't do that like I, that's not what I'm good at mm. yeah I know that you know I, I think I'm good at observational comedy you know I talk about things that I find funny thankfully other people find them funny too but more importantly they relate to them and hopefully especially with Life Sucks um, the tour it's the stuff that I talk about in terms of mental health and and kind of growing up, um, you know, in a in a quite a kind of traditional strict Punjabi Sikh family. I hope that a lot of that stuff. In fact, I know it has because I've had feedback saying that you know this has made me think about my mental health, or this has made me think about my family situation, or or you know I now know how to help a family member because of what you've said about how to deal with mental health. So, you know that to me that's that's just gold like that I I feel incredibly lucky to mm-hmm. have managed to not only write a show that appeals to a lot of people that I've managed to find you know an amazing kind of producer an amazing director um you know and, and got it out there and you know and we were selling out you know we were selling out shows so. yeah you were you were and um you, you I think you definitely found your voice in comedy you know observation yeah, I think you know so. you know mm. uh, and I could see the difference from when I first saw you because I've been to your first show. And um, to, to, <laughs> uh, did I mention I was at your first show? <laughs> and um, to to the later shows as well, I could see yeah. the confidence and um, yeah. And your set was tighter as well. But it's, yeah. But your first show was that's, funny that's as well. Really good. That's really good to hear because I was like, imagine if you'd been going for four years. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I could see it in the first show at least. It. I just got all the jokes. I just got it, mm. you know, and I was mm. laughing. I was on board with you, and a lot of, the, and the audience was as well. And, yeah, that was uh, a gr- that was a great night. I love that night. It, it must have been for you for being your first show as well. Um, yeah. So, writing. I'm glad you started doing a little bit of writing now. You, you yeah, started. Me too. And um, so, I felt is like that my brain you, was calcifying. I was like, you know, I was really like, oh god, am I ever going to like be able to get? You ever going to do it? Again? But I, yeah. Would you ever think it's a bit like training? I know you started going to the gym. Like, I don't always like going to the gym. I've got the gym in my house, literally in yeah. my house. And I don't, and like, there's days when I procrastinate and uh, I'm watching John Hamm on Black Mirror. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and I think, oh, I'll go later. I'll go later. Mm. And then, I, then I, I, I beat myself up over it for ages, yeah. you know, in my mind. Mm. You should really be doing it. You're sitting there, you're being lazy. Mm. You've got all that gear in there, da, da, da. And the only thing that stops it is going in there and doing it. Yeah, doing it, yeah. Right? And then I feel yeah. all right, and then I feel great afterwards, and I think, oh, I should have just... Yeah. Well, that yeah why, why did I waste three hours just fannying around where I could exactly. have done this and got I on with my day? Yeah. could have done this three yeah. hours ago. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I, I find that happens to me a lot. And I don't know, maybe in your writing, mm. if you just 10 minutes and keep going and keep going... Yeah, I think maybe now it would, but I think... Yeah, yeah, you're right, you know, and I've, I think I've read so many books around creativity and writing and how people write and I listen to podcasts, you know, about how the the routine that certain writers have and what works for them, you know, and I always used to be like, okay, so if I just get up really early in the morning and no yeah. one else is up, I'll just open, open my laptop and then I'll just write and then, you know, and then you wake up and you're like, oh no, I'm just going to have another five minutes or oh, whatever or, or, yeah, exactly, <laughs> or I'm like, I'll just go on Twitter and then before you know it, it's like 10 o'clock and you're like, oh shit, yeah. you know, better get up. So. I think um, for me, this is another thing I'm figuring out slowly, is that it is so different, isn't it, for, for, for people? It's so, you know, I need a deadline, really, mm, to okay. work. So the reason I'm writing is because I'm entering a short story competition, like, you know, because I was like, I really want to enter that. 
if I don't enter it, I'm really going to kick myself because it's a great little competition. Um, so I need, I need a little something, you know, or I need to be so like entranced with an idea that I'm like, I can't stop thinking about it. I need to write it down. I need mm. to like, you know, but I'm always kind of jotting down little phrases and little ideas on my phone, you know, as I'm kind of, you know, doing whatever. Yeah. Um, so I've gone, yeah, but actually sitting down and writing, I mean, saying that I've not bloody written anything today because I wrote it yesterday. I thought, right, I'll edit it, you know, um, today. I haven't bloody done it, have I? Um, so, <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think I don't, I can't sit down and just write because what's more, there's nothing more terrifying than a blank page. Yeah. You know, yeah, that little yeah. cursor blinking at you, like judging you for like yeah. not finding the right words. Yeah. Um, I, but, it's, I, uh, but it's interesting to, you, you've kind of worked yourself out because you, you said you need a deadline. And yeah. you need to be so uh, really passionate about something to be all mm. in into it, you know. So you kind of mm. know how you work, and yeah. you could, I think you've got to sort of play some mind tricks on yourself. Yeah, that's uh, exactly what it is. That, that's what I was going to say. I went to see a talk by the author Jojo Moyes, and she said that she wakes up at five o'clock and she writes. Not she's like she hates waking up at five o'clock. Mm. She absolutely hates. She's not a morning person, but she said that's the only time that she can write. She's got young children. She's got to school mm. right. Blah, blah, blah. So she gets up at like five o'clock and she writes. And she said the other thing is it's great because it just kind of tricks her brain into writing before her brain really properly wakes up and kicks in. Mm. You know, because um, yeah. there's always that voice. I mean, you know, because you write. You know, there's always that kind of voice that kind of tries to edit as you're writing. You know, there's always that voice. Oh, that's crap. It's, yeah, oh, I leave that now. This is rubbish. Oh, you can't know. And I, I think a uh, word, what's that word? And I think um, smartphones don't help. You know, this is how we type these days, don't we? So we, yeah, type, I know. we, we type a message and it's like back, 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 Type back, back, yeah. That's what my, my daughter <laughs> said that to me. She goes, you type like that, but then you always press that button. I go, that's because I've written the word wrong. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Do you know what? I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I opened my laptop for the first time when I, when I did that writing yesterday. And um, I'd forgotten how like sloppy my typing has become because I'm so used to it just being corrected by my phone yeah and I was like can I just get correct like, can yeah. you get like predicted Correct it, damn it <laughs> yeah I was like what do you mean I've got to figure out how many s's there are in disappointing what is the point of you um, <laughs> <laughs> but also I have to put my phone away I've now realized this this the fact a few things I have to put my phone away I have to put noise cancelling headphones on and I have to listen to music that doesn't have any lyrics it's yeah, like quite chill kind of like music. I can't work with music with lyrics. No, because I start listening to the song. And yeah, I, and then you start but, typing the song. And I think this is a good song. I remember this song. Hey, <laughs> ja, hey, Jamal Law. <laughs> nice callback. Yeah, good work. Thank you. And then I remember I'm fucking old, and I'll, I'll get back on it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, suck. <laughs> Sorry, right. Sorry, mate. But like we've just all we've done is like people are going to be listening to this guy. How depressing is this? We have literally just been um, ranting, haven't we? <laughs> Each other yeah. about <laughs> great podcast, great comeback, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll tell you a good book I re uh, read is The War on Art. I don't know if you read that. Yes, I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Stephen Pressfield. Is that's that it. And, it, and it, that, it is. It is. And um, he talks about the muse, doesn't he? Where you. Yeah. You, you, you you turn up every day to write. You know, it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. in the morning, but you turn up and you do. Mm -hmm. It could be terrible work, but you turn up and turn mm -hmm. up. And one day the muse will arrive, and that's when the inspiration yeah. hits you. And but if you mm -hmm. don't turn up, the muse may arrive, and you're not there. You've missed mm -hmm. that opportunity. And it, it. I mean, the book's a lot better than what I just explained. But <laughs> get the book. But you know what? I listened. I listened to the audio. I, I had the book, and then I, I lost it somewhere. Then I've just found it recently. But then I um, downloaded the audio book. And I listen to the audio book and he's bloody reading it and he's just, it's awful. Yeah, right. If you've ever listened, never buy, sorry, Stephen, but like, Steve, <laughs> like I'm on first name terms yeah. with him. Um, um, sorry, Steve, uh, don't listen to the audio book because it's got this like really cheesy, like um, epic music, like, you know, in Gladiator, like that kind of like really like really yeah. hardcore cheesy instrumental kind of big swells of music yeah, and yeah. then there's him and he's like really american and he's got yeah. this, and i'm like and he's but he's got this kind of american drone yeah. type voice yeah so um yeah read the book kids so, you, you're, you're like all right mate calm down i'm just trying to write something i know exactly <laughs> what's the music <laughs> yeah. 
It's a lot. It's just a lot. I'm, like, yeah. I'm sure you're making some really good points. I actually want to listen to it now because <laughs> I want to hear the music. Honestly, see if you can get a free version. I don't want you wasting your three ninety nine on Audible. It is a. It's a good book. It's a brilliant if, book. If you read it yourself, and um, yeah. I think we've uh, we won't make that as an Instagram post. Yeah, um, so. but maybe the others. But yeah, so there's many ways uh, we can use this time. I mean, I I, I think I I kind of relate to you definitely on, on on some of the mental aspects as well. I think when lockdown happened, I started clearing up things around the house as well. Mm. I could see mess everywhere. It's been mess mm. everywhere in my house for years. But suddenly, yeah. I've I've noticed it all, and I'm hoovering yeah. up, and uh, I'm doing dishes, which is very rare, mm. and. Um, I'm in the garage and I'm doing this, that and the other and I'm, I'm putting things in the car to take to the dump. My wife goes, the dump's mm. closed, you idiot. And I thought, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And it's things like this. And my wife was like, well, you know, we're very lively today. Sometimes I think maybe she if she thinks I'm back on the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of energy. Right. And uh, I said, no, no, I'm all right. I feel I'm all right. And it took me a couple of weeks, you know, just to think, you know yeah. what? We don't know when this is going to end. So... Well, yeah. I mean, and this is the other thing. I think, you know, we've all got our own way of coping with it. I'm not saying that our way is any better than the other way, you know, anybody else's way. And all Everything people are doing is kind of, you know, completely valid, unless they're out doing the conga with bloody flags hanging off their doors and whatnot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I oh, can't yeah. even start. Can't even. Flag bastards, I call them. Yeah. Uh, did, can't, did, can't bear. Can't did, bear you not, did you not have a street party? No. What, in Gravesend? Yeah. I don't think so. My dad, my dad went for a walk my dad went for a walk and he said oh I said there were some people sitting out on their lawns and he was like what are they doing and I was like well they're obviously you know some sort of suicide pact because you know they're um they obviously don't want to live you know they yeah. just you know they, they'd rather you know eat scones together and die than just stay in their own bloody house anyway um so if there is any the cult, is- cults out there listening <laughs> it, it, it probably is it's a, a great good, time for them. Great it's time. A great time. Go lick some lampposts. It's a this, lovely time for you. All. This is the we might see a group on the news and it could be down to me and you. Oh no, it could be down to us. You have to cut this out. Also, yeah, don't it's really bad. I don't <laughs> the want to make light of suicide either, so I have to cut that bit out. There's there's a um, reporter two minutes away, uh, away from them saying, So so where did you get this idea for <laughs> licking licking lampposts in a group? <laughs> Well, we was randomly on iTunes and uh, <laughs> we came across this podcast and there's a comedian called Sook and she says, now's the time, if you're a cult, <laughs> to go lick lampposts. Get involved. But it is a great time. If you are a, su- uh, a cult out there, um, yeah. yeah, now's the time to go out, you know. There you go. Uh, yeah, sort it out. But so- my dad even like um, refuses to go out and clap for, the, you know, like um, beating pots and pans and clapping for carers because he was like... He was like, I get the point of it, but he said, me clapping isn't going to, you know, fill the bellies of their children. Like, I mean, doing this, he was like, you know, they should be paid a proper wage. They should be taken care of. I was like, yeah, I yeah, totally agree. I agree. But what I was saying was like earlier was there is no right way to deal with this. Nobody knows what they're doing. You know, there is no right to, way to deal with a pandemic. You know, there's no right way to cope with it at all. So people are trying to figure out what the right thing is and trying to kind of be productive, which to me is ridiculous. Like being productive when like we're in the middle of a crisis it's like you know imagine if they'd kind of said to a caveman you know in, there's a there's a whole kind of pride of saber-toothed tigers like coming towards us you know and he's there you know in his cave doing a painting going oh but you know I'm not I need to be creative yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's not quite done yet it's not quite perfect oh why it's can't I put, think of something a towel on a buffalo hang on <laughs> yeah. I'm but you wouldn't, done. would you? No. So when people when people are like, I can't be creative right now, it's like, no, you can't, because you're like metaphorically being chased by a wild animal. You're metaphorically like being hunted down. Like that's essentially so, what stress is, isn't it? And, and, stress how, response. and how come there's so many joggers these days? Oh God. I yeah. hate joggers. I've always hated joggers. I've hated joggers. Or oh, I've always just them with their germy breath. Just, you know, I hated them in the before times. I hate them now. I hate them in the after times. Like, I cannot stand joggers. They, they're always jogging. I can never just, like, get out your way either. They're going to jog at you. I was walking down um, London Road. You know what I'm talking about. I was walking down London Road. I was walking into town a few weeks ago. And there were, like, two, two of them, like, next to each other, just kind of literally, like, running at people. 
Um, they were on the other side of the road, though, because if they were near me, I'd have beat with them into the road. Um, I just think, like, it's fine, jog, but also just be a bit aware of, like, your surroundings. Exactly. You know, stop, like, walking into people or, like, you know, or jogging into people and just panting everywhere. Can't it's like a, it's a double uh, running coronavirus. Yeah, exactly. It's like, why, what are you trying to do? Um, yeah, I think people will do anything though to get away from like their kids. <laughs> they and, 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 just just, it, just running around. <laughs> just, just like, I'd rather go for a, my knees are fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I've not been for a run in 17 years. Yeah. I cannot stand another day with my children. I'm going out. I've been out here four hours. <laughs> <laughs> but my, 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 daily wife, exercise. my wife goes out for a walk and, uh, Every time she comes back, uh, I go, how was it? I go, did you bump into anyone? She goes, runners. She hates runners. She oh. goes, she goes, he ran past. So we get on. She, 100%. And she goes, he ran past and he spat on the floor. Not near me, but. Oh, I just. And she, she, so, so she turned back and came home. She had only been out five minutes. Oh, <laughs> so, bless her. Right? So, uh, but there's a multiple uh, invasion of runners now. Everyone's running, I yeah. see. Everyone's in the fitness, apparently. Uh, so you can mm. do unlimited fitness now. I never mm. knew everyone was into fitness since... No since one's into fitness, mate. Just like no one's into baking. No. Like, this is not normal life. It's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of cooks online as well. Yeah, exactly. They annoy like, all me of as a well. Sudden, they annoy oh, me as well. I, I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm always posting what I'm baking. No, no, no. My stories. I will tell you after this, the people. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> senior no, cooking no, it's, no. it's fine it's fine thanks it's right. but there, there's a um, I, I, I bake weekly that's all I do I've got to kind of keep a lid on it but no I bake but weekly there's other ones setting up all sorts of channels and uh, pages oh yeah so that that's but what I, I mean I wouldn't mind if they I wouldn't mind it if they were good that's what I mean. They've started up <laughs> careers as uh, bakers. Yeah. I want to know when this, when the, the, the lockdown's over, all this is going to go, isn't it? Everyone's going to... Oh, not, yeah, of course. We're, we're going to go back to absolutely hating each other. Nobody's going to be jogging, you know. No. <laughs> Nobody will be indoors. We'll all be out. Exactly. You know, nobody want to stay indoors. Apart from me, because I quite like staying indoors. I um, enjoy staying indoors. Yeah. But, I mean... Also, I, I don't know about you, I don't feel safe, like, you know, when they're saying, like, now, like, today's the day that you know, some of the restrictions have, you know, That's right. uh, been lifted effectively. I don't feel safe going out, no. really, unless mm. unless I have to. No. Like, I, mean, I don't feel, not not because of me, because I go out and blub the must up, because of other bloody people. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some They're of the menace. memes, the memes of Boris saying, uh, you can go out, but not out, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I've fun. just said to my parents, I was like, we're not bloody going anywhere. Like, if this carries on much longer, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm digging a bunker in the back garden. So, I mean, yeah. So say if they, you know, in a couple of weeks, say, look, you know, this, uh, the trends, it's gone down, you know, the R number's mm. gone down and mm-hmm. uh, we can slowly start putting the children back into school. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to put my children back in school. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of my friends who are parents are saying that, like, they don't feel comfortable at all sending the children back. No, because my five-year-old, she's not going to social distance. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a wonderful comedian that I follow on Twitter called Jane Godley who's like I don't understand I'm paraphrasing but she put a tweet out saying I don't understand how you think that schools are going to be able to control coronavirus when they can't even control nits yeah, like it's exactly. such a good point it's exactly. such a good point nits the most standard thing that most people at some point in their life at school have got yeah and, they, and now they've got a global pandemic to deal with yeah and mm. my, my daughter's not going to glo- um distance herself from her friends and the teacher no of course not and she, she could be quite scared if a teacher's got a mask on yeah, yeah. you know um, it's really unsettling it's really unsettling for the young kids she, she's already paranoid when I come in she goes uh, have you washed your hands um, oh bless she, her she, she's like a mini my, my wife actually she goes have, <laughs> have, you, have you washed your hands and I, and I said yeah I washed my hands she goes oh well, I, can, I can I can touch you now and you forget oh. how it affects uh, young people and even the elderly mm. it could be quite confused at what's going on people living yeah. on their own so mm. I don't think the communication's been great always um, you know from- no I think it's I think it, I honestly I'm like seriously considering emigrating like after like at some point in the near future because of how one of the reasons is because of how badly this has been handled mm. i'm like i don't trust this government i don't trust the way they've handled anything i don't feel safe i don't feel like they're putting 
their citizens minds at rest I don't feel like they've got their citizens best interests at heart you know it's definitely profit over people mm. which Absolutely. is you know why which is why you've gone oh yeah you know if you're working construction yeah off you go off you know you can do that and then you know and then you've got pictures of like overcrowded but like crowded buses and stuff or crowded tubes and then they're saying oh look at this and it's like yeah because you told people they should go back to work exactly you know yeah. and then I think what's going to happen is we'll have a second wave sadly mm. um and then you will probably you know there'll probably be hopefully even like stricter kind of lockdown measures yeah. but there needs to be the kind of funding in place for people to make sure they're okay you know people need to be kind of well supported for that to happen but like, we've got none of that um so yeah i'm thinking uh, canada canada's <laughs> Can, canada's the beauty have you been to canada I've been to Canada, yeah. Oh, I went last nice. year. Where did where did you go? What part? I went to Vancouver. I just yes. did like a one-off gig out there, and it yeah. was just like I didn't get to see a lot of it because I was just out there for work. But I did a gig there, and honestly, the people were so lovely. Yeah, like the people, you know. I know everybody says, "Oh, Canadians are really polite," but you know, it's a bit of a stereotype. Well, I tell you what, it's a stereotype for a reason. Yeah, because they were just the most beautiful audience I'd ever had, and just genuinely so interested in you and like. I don't think I've ever felt so bloody loved. They were so nice, but you know, I think I reckon they've got the right idea. Yeah, can, can or I might, I might go, might, I might go a bit close. I might go to Ireland. I reckon. Yeah, oh, Ireland's cool as well. Um, yeah. Canada. I mean, Vancouver. In, I've got family, family there. It is a beautiful mm. place. Um, you know, you got one side, you got beaches, and and, yeah. and and a few miles the other way, you got mountains, snow-capped mountains. People are nice. You know. Mm. And you're not in America, are you? So you're all right, really. <laughs> so, you're, so you're on, you know, a uh, win-win situation. Yeah. Plus, you've got a large Punjabi community. Exactly. In Vancouver so, as well. So you can assimilate in straight away. No one's going to know. Right. You know. Yeah. You know you're going to be able to get your Atta and stuff and yeah. you'll be able to, you know, get all your spices and things. So you're t- talking of Atta just reminded me, you know, my mum's in India at the moment, stuck. Oh, no. She's in India right now. And she's meant oh, to be back gosh. in uh, 1st of May. So, right. and before oh, she left, no. she said, um, the Atta's nearly finished, so <laughs> make sure you go get some more. And I was like, yeah, 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 right. wh- yeah, whatever, you know, I'm not listening to her, you know, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, we had the lockdown. Mm, right out of Atta, didn't we? Yeah, of course. And then I had to go to the shop, and that was a, that was a mission. That was the early days when it was like Mission Impossible, Trump, Tom yeah. Cruise, you know. Ghost Recon, yeah. Mission Impossible. And it was absolutely rammed in there, you know. Um, any cults listening, that would have been a place to go. <laughs> to <at> that go. <laughs> the World Foods Isle in Asda would have been the way to go. And, and, it reminded, um, and it reminded me when you said, you know, you, like Asian families and your parents like keep a lot of food at home. You know, they yeah. always have extra yeah, yeah. in, you know. We've always sort of um, stocked up, haven't we? And mm. um so maybe they know a lot more than we give them credit for sometimes, I think. Well, definitely. I think I, you know, I always used to be like, you know, to go around friends' houses and their houses be like really minimal. You know, there'd be like no stuff lying around. You know, their kitchen would be really minimal, you know, or whatever. And I'd be like, oh, you know, we've just got stuff everywhere. And now I'm like, thank God we've got stuff everywhere. Like, <laughs> thank God, you know, we've always got, you know, some dal and we've always got, after, we've always got tins, tomatoes and chicken and you know what what else whatever else because it means that not having to go to the you know do a big shop every few days you know you know because it's like we're okay but I think that is because you know they have that they kind of have that survival mentality you know that immigrant kind of mentality of you know always make sure that you've got you'll always make sure you're safe you know it's it's food is security isn't it that kind of like you feel like that security so as much as I think, you know, God, dickheads, when I saw people like stockpiling toilet paper or stockpiling flour, in another way, I'm like, that also represents your need for security and survival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a survival instinct, you know. Mm. But, but I never got why it was just toilet paper and pasta. Yeah, I don't think anyone, pasta I understand, because pasta you're like, it's a staple, you know, a little yeah. goes a long way. Great. They, could, they could have got rice like, though. There's loads of rice available. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Uh-huh. Where people went for pasta. I think it's because maybe they, maybe because people are a bit scared of rice because of the whole like not being able to figure out how to cook it properly and get it fluffy. Yeah. And, you know, maybe making too much or whatever. Whereas maybe, maybe, is... maybe white English people like pasta. Asians yeah. are. Am I stereotyping people here? 
Yeah, possibly, but I don't. I don't think you're kind Who of cares? far off the mark. I don't think you're far off the mark. There wasn't a rice shortage here, was there? But no. you know, <laughs> there, wouldn't, there, there wouldn't have been a shortage of anything if people just <laughs> calmed down, right? Down, yeah. And because uh, actually now it's sort of leveled out now, and you can go and buy it wherever yeah, you definitely. want. Um, yeah, I saw some tagliatelle in the shops the other day. No, so. no. It's very, I know, very exciting. See, so things, I stocked up. Things are it's, getting better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cults listening, leave it. Leave it for another yeah. year. Tagliatelle's yeah, back good. on the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's something worth living for now. But it, it was it, 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 yeah, it, it was it was interesting watching people's reactions to how they um sort of their initial survival mechanism. Buy loads yeah. of food, uh, yeah. hermit away in your homes, you know, and mm. uh, and wait for the best. And I and I think that's why the government probably didn't have an early lockdown because they thought people are going to do it for the first few weeks and mm. then people are going to get bored, which they have been. And they're slowly, slowly yeah. uh, sort of coming out, coming out of the caves, you yeah. know, thinking I've had enough now, I want to come out. Uh, nothing's going mm. to happen to me. So I assume at some point we will all be allowed out, phased out to go out. And I, I don't mm-hmm. know about events and, you know, stand up shows and, it may be end of the year, could be, who knows, yeah. September. But me and you don't know. I, we don't know. We're not scientists. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't think the scientists probably even know, really. It's it's quite kind of hard to predict um, yeah. what's going on. And in a way, that's absolutely terrifying because you've kind of got no control. But in a way, it's kind of comforting because not we're all in this together because I bloody hate that phrase because phrase, we're not all in it together. We don't, you know. No. If a billionaire is on their private island and somebody in a high rise in Tower Hamlets, you know, they're not in it together, mate. Mm. Um, so we don't live in an equal society. So I think, um, but what we are kind of going through together is the not knowing. Yeah. You know, is the unknown. And so, you know, no one, you know, we've kind of, we can speculate and we can, you know, read into the, you know, the daily briefings or look at other countries or whatever, but we just don't know. And it's yeah. as simple as that. And I think there's not many times in your life that you can kind of say that with any great certainty. Cause I think we're always trying to cling on to some form of security, some form of certainty, some, you know, we're always trying to kind of go, Oh, well, everything else is going to shit, but at least work is all right. Or, you know, work's going to shit, but at least, you know, everything's all right with my partner or whatever, you know, there's always kind of some sort of, you yeah. know, I mean, stability. We, 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 we could have solved all these problems if we didn't put 5G towers, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. I think definitely now that that, you know, the cult is not going to kill themselves because they're staggering the telly in the shops. So maybe, you know, they could um, take down some five G towers, which is obviously what caused all this. Yeah, you don't believe that nonsense. Make themselves do you? useful. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm no. I'm, I just honestly, I I'm so surprised about people and how they react to these things. And I think it's kind of what you're saying as well. It's the way we react to certain things. That's why conspiracy theories are so popular that we try and mm. make sense of big of events. Course in in yeah. the world things like 9-11 um mm. diana dying in a car yeah. crash because they're big events we mm. can't we can't seem to sort of comprehend these things can happen well we can't take them at face value you know we yeah. can't take them from kind of like what they're on now don't get me wrong i'm sure there's loads of shit that the government keeps from Absolutely. us you know i'm sure there's 100%. loads of stuff that you know that we we don't get to know but um but i'm also like I don't really care if the moon landings were fake. No. <laughs> like there's a part of me that's kind of like, it doesn't really affect me. No. no day to day no. life. No. And no, exactly. But <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's just interests me, you know, things like 5G and that, and people will be sending me, you know, WhatsApp, you know, it's a great messaging mm. tool. We kind of organize this on WhatsApp, but yeah, the amount of nonsense I get sent to me is ridiculous. And uh, there was one of a guy in America walking down the street and he's t- I don't know, it's a random guy, um, African-American guy telling, talking to the camera about 5G. And Mm. he's in a nondescript building saying that's where they got, the government's got these things and they're making these 5G towers. And the person that sent this to me said, see, see. And I go, who's this guy? And they said, I don't know, (laughs) but this is true. And I said, who is this guy? Is he a scientist? Oh, no, 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 we don't know. Someone sent it to me, but it makes sense. If you listen to it, it makes sense. 
god and it's just some random bloke walking down the street you know so um it shows the kind of how fragile society can be yeah where, this is yeah, the thing yeah, yeah. well we, we think we're all secure within a society yep. you know within our sort of social circles but actually mm-hmm. a thing like this can show the fragility of of people mm. and, and and our society you know and like you said it, it this the virus does discriminate mm. it definitely does against uh black and asian minorities you yep. know people on low income are one of yep. the highest numbers of deaths Mm-hmm. You know, and if you look at the NHS, a lot of the workers that you see that have passed away um, mm. are, are Asian or black, you know, or, or mm. immigrants, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so sometimes it, it, it's kind of a, a media thing to say, isn't it, on the news, you know, we're all in it together. Oh, yeah, we're all in this together. I, yeah, I don't. I also, um, I really hope that people are really taking note of the companies that are really taking care of their employees. And the companies that have really, you know, fucked them over, mm. essentially. And they kind of take, because I know that I've got like a mental list of places that I won't be shopping yeah. again because of yeah. the way that they've treated, you know, their staff. Um, and I really hope that we kind of vote with our wallets mm. once this is over and start supporting more small businesses, more independent businesses, mm. rather than, you know, those big corporations. Um, yeah, it's these big... So, yeah. Big, big corporations, you know, these Amazons and I've, they're, yeah. they're, beginning, they're beginning to treat people like, um, just like, you know, like a, an ant farm. They're the workers, yeah. ain't they? Or the bees, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like worker bees, you know, and they've got the queen. Well, our whole bloody system is broken, you know, the fact that, you know, minimum wage is not, it's not enough, you know, it's not enough in this country, you know, at all, you know, the benefit system is all like messed up and stuff, you know, it's like there's so many kind of, issues to kind of sort out here as well like our system like you know people are like oh yeah we should go back to normal I'm like but our normal wasn't working like our normal wasn't a good you know we were in a housing crisis you know Mm. like we weren't in a good place at all we had Brexit remember Brexit Um, yeah so you know we had we had all that going on you know so it's not like oh things were great and you know things weren't great it's, you know it's funny you should say brexit because um that was the word right and everywhere you mm. went brexit and i was, it was getting sick of brexit and even i was at the end of it look just leave let's just leave you know um yeah i've had enough because well, there's nothing we can do yeah there's nothing we can do like as much as you know i was talking to a friend about it earlier and i was like as much as i you know i wanted to remain um and so many other people did as well now i'm just like I don't feel like there's anything that we can do. I guess we're just gonna have to leave unless now let's just get it over and done with. Yeah. And but it shows as well, really. Um, I mean, we've created these borders and rules. Yeah, and because, of course. And it, it means absolutely. And we created none. Brexit, you know. Brexit was like it's it was, a it's it, a it totally was on, man-made thing. It was on no one's mind, Brexit. Yeah. No one's mind. Yeah. And they just um and, and the government at the time decided, let's put it to the vote, to the people. Sometimes so you shouldn't let the children vote. Yeah. <laughs> I just think I had absolutely, yeah, I was just like, what is going on? People did not know what they were voting for. But, you know, it's interesting when they were like, oh, you know, we're going to pump all this money into the NHS because obviously we're not going to, yeah. it's not going to go anywhere else. So I'd like to know, like, yeah. where that 360 billion or whatever it was that oh, exactly. we were promised on well, the side is, of the bus. This, this is what I mean. We, children, we could do with it now. Absolutely. But well, this is what I mean when I say children, because like children don't know everything. And at that time, mm. we didn't know everything. We thought no, it's... we didn't know the facts. We didn't yeah. know the facts, and we've been asked mm. to uh, vote on something. But it's interesting mm. that now it means absolutely nothing when this global pandemic's going on. Yeah, well, because now it's life and death. Nobody gives a shit about Brexit, and also all those immigrants that you are so keen on, like shipping off back home. Well, guess what? They're the ones that are literally dying yeah. to save you. They're the ones we're clapping for on a Thursday, which seems slightly mm. patronising now on, I don't know what week we're on, but uh, I mean, we do it. My kids do it. We made them little yeah. rainbow um, rainbows and we stuck them on our window. Oh, and we get involved. Yeah. But after all, I think your dad's right. Wouldn't it be better than clapping to maybe just pay them more and get, yeah. them, and get them these PPEs? You know, how hard yeah. can it be to just get them some protective clothing? Well, you'd think, you'd think yeah. it wouldn't be that hard, but, you know. I know, I mean, and they had to order them from Turkey, 
which was and they were the wrong ones weren't they like they, they were the didn't wrong pass ones. the yeah and there what was a, balls are. I think there was a comedian and Twitter's good for some there's some funny people on there that if you've ever been to Turkey and brought some clothes you always know they're fake right <laughs> Yeah. yeah, all the yeah, t-shirts, yeah. you know, with like the it's fake designers, fake yeah. designer, you know, Adidas with four mm. stripes and things like that, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, that's, and that's where the government decided to go buy these PPEs, life saving. Um, this is, I, I think that's what you mean, right? About this, the organisation of this. It's just, ter- it's just really. I'm not saying that. Oh, I know everything, and I could organise this better. But come on, it just feels like we're a laughing stock compared to all the other nations who seem to yeah. have like got. I look at New Zealand, like they lock that shit. I mean, okay, so I know there's more sheep there than people and, yeah. you know, it's a different country, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, there's, they might not have the population or whatever, I don't know. But loads of other companies, loads of other countries have managed it. You know, it's yeah. just us and the USA yeah, um, who have, like, you know, royally messed it up. And Which, is, know, stra- which is strange about the USA because they've got that a very competent leader there. Well, I don't get it. I don't understand what what similarities their world leader has don't with our one. We, yeah. literally, we literally haven't got time to work that out. So We don't. Let's, let's but, uh, leave it to the listeners to figure that to one out. Figure, because, I mean, they've actually got um, an outbreak of COVID in the White House now. Did you know that? No, I didn't. No. So the valet to uh, the president, uh, yeah. he's, he, he's tested positive for... Oh, God. So this is a chap that, you know, gives him his um, McDonald's at night and his Diet Coke. He's got tested right. positive and there's a few, I think it's one of the press secretaries or, so it's, we're in the White House now. And the, and, and mm. he, he was about to, uh, a bit like here, to say to people, you know, you need to go back out and start working and we yeah. need to the eco- you need to get the economy going. So do you think they're mm-hmm. balancing deaths over money? Oh, always. I think always. Like, you know, it's always profit. We live in a capitalist society, so it's always going to be profits over people. Mm. Um, you know, and that's what really annoys me about people who are quite blind to the fact that this whole like linking your productivity to your worst thing or, you know, having to work all the time or, you know, just it's like, well, yeah, because the system has been created in a certain way where you can't survive unless you work mm. in that way. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, and it's made it made you feel like that is like the right thing to do. Whereas actually, no, you know, in Canada, was it Canada where, or I think it happened in Germany as well, where like a lot of self-employed people or or loads of other people kind of just applied and they got like the money in their account the next day or like the same day or whatever, and it was all sorted. And you're like, oh great, so now you don't have to worry about you know paying your rent or paying your bills for a bit, and it's definitely helps. Like mm. whereas here we're now in May. You know, I know that people are applying for universal credit, which took weeks and weeks to come through, you know, and then you've got, um, you know, which is also like not the best system anyway. And then you've got self-employed people, you know, and we're waiting, what, two months for any mm. sort of like financial assistance. Mm. So it, it, it can be done, you know. Of course, yeah, because other yeah. countries can do it. Other countries can do it, you know. So I don't understand why this country can't. I genuinely think that they... This is a ploy to, you know, for herd immunity. Like yeah. the fact that, you know, the people that you're saying, well, if you can't work at home and if you're working on a construction site, the people that are going to work are working class people, mm. you know, okay. and working class lives have always been seen as more expendable. Mm. If you look back to history, you know, more expendable than anyone else's. You know, the people sitting at home and quite kind of, you know, comfortable, the majority of them will be, will be middle class. Yeah, yeah. You know, because they, they can do that. So yeah, so, exactly. So so the highest death tolls are people like bus drivers, security yeah. guards. You know, it's going to mm-hmm. be it's going to be cleaners. So cleaners are going to be going to offices, and mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, tube drivers, I suppose. Um, um, mm-hmm. So I mean, look, it's a difficult situation. I, mm. I, I think we sold some of the issues in the world today. <laughs> Just ranted at each other. I don't even know if this is going to be a good, like, good listen for anyone. But I feel great. I feel, I feel great. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. Great chat. I'm going to put it out there and uh, tag in John M. Oh, <laughs> He's not on social media. I checked. I checked when I had a, when I really had a crush on him. I checked. He's not on there. Sometimes he's too cool. He's too, he's too cool. cool. He, he don't need to be on there, does he? 
No, he probably doesn't even have a phone, you know. And He's one of those cool guys. It, uh, he doesn't have a phone. He, he just he just knows, doesn't he? Someone needs him. Yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's also been interesting, actually, about celebrities and how really we realise they they are useless in in, uh, yeah. in a vibe. I, I, the funny one was that Gal Gadot, you know, uh, Wonder Woman. Oh my god! And oh I'm a, my god! I'm a big fan. I don't follow many people on Instagram, um, like American stars, and you know, like Beyonce mm. and all Jack, the people do. You know, I don't, but I follow her, and um, she done that song, Imagine. Oh god! So don't. I thought, I thought maybe we could sing it out together. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not doing it. I mean. Imagine, literally, imagine, like, who thought this is a great idea? Who thought, let me get my celebrity mates, all of whom are probably millionaires or near about, or if not more, you know, with a ton of money. Imagine if they just went, do you know what people need? They don't need our money right now. No, put your wallet away, Jamie Dornan. That's not what they need right now. What they need is for us to sing a, sing a song really fucking badly. Yeah. Like, that's what they need. And I think, I really hope that this makes people look at the cult of celebrity. Yeah, you know, and and notice the ones who give a lot, you know, to charity or who are doing a lot of the work. Because there are some, you know, there are some celebrities who are out on the ground. You know, I know like Dominic Cooper is, you know, doing like food deliveries every single day. You know, for mm. you know to to kind of um, like delivering food parcels to people who really need them in London. I know that other celebrities are doing the same thing, but it's also quite hard to stomach when you know that people are you know for example people in abusive relationships are having a really tough time of it now people have already I think can't remember they what the number is but you know a fair number of women have died already mm. at home in these violent situations at the hands of their partners um and then on the other hand you've got some big celebrity in their mansion you know, in LA or whatever, just like whinging because they can't go outside when they've got like I everything think, there, you know, and you're like, I find it really hard to feel sorry for you, mate. Because I think the tone of it was, uh, they just misread the tone of the world at that point. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, 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 think, I, I can understand I, it can get carried away with stuff. I get that, I get that. I, I, I did think uh, long and hard about that situation. Um, mm. You'd be surprised to know, because I was thinking if I was uh, Gal Gadot's friend, and um, I was famous, like mega famous, and she rang me up. She said, hey, you know, Sat, you know, I'll still be called Sat if I was a Hollywood star. And um, yeah, yeah, you would. She, keep, yeah. You'd keep it real. Yeah, Sat Binder, sing, man. <laughs> and um, she rings me up and says, look, I've got a great idea. I know we can, you know, do something out there and uh, let's sing Imagine. I, I'll be like, uh, you know what, I'm not a great singer really. And uh yeah, I know someone. I'll just, I think I'll just pass it on to someone else because it it, it yeah. was cr- it was cringeworthy. Um, it was really bad. It was really really bad. You know, um, but it just shows me that you know uh, we look sometimes look to celebrities to we listen to them, don't we? People do listen. Mm, to them. Yeah, we're influenced by them. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I think it's just shown that you know they they just they're just as silly as us really at times. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no? yeah. They're just as fallible as we are. Yeah, yeah. Of and uh, but so we've. I think we're learning a lot of lessons about ourselves in, in this situation. Yeah. We could take some positives out of it. But like you said, hopefully mm. when we come out the other end, we don't all revert back to being dickheads again. But but <laughs> hope and maybe less dickheads than we were. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're going to, you know, kind of come out of lockdown and be some like some utopian society. But I hope that at least we can, you know, work together to, um, you know, eat the rich. Yeah, that'd be nice. And you <laughs> and you can bake them, couldn't you? Could you bake? Them? And I could bake them because now we're doing it. No, you probably get protein poisoning. Um, not that I've looked into it, but you. Know. <laughs> you got to thank Google for, haven't you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> we learn so much from Google. <laughs> Um, no, I hope that we leave and, you know, certain, um, certain companies or certain big kind of corporations that have really like sacked their staff at like with no notice and like, you know, little to no pay. I hope they really go under. Like, I hope that people really do start thinking about what, how they spend their money, where they spend it, you know, mm. how we treat each other, how we treat the earth, you know, mm. and be a bit more grateful for, for having you know, that we live on this planet and that we, you know, have, you know, that we live in, you know, decent areas or whatever, wherever you are, we're grateful for whatever we have, you mm. know. So, 
Uh, we won't though. We'll all be crowding to get on an easy jet plane to, you know, Florence or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Costa del Sol. The um, airport. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I'll be there, Luton Airport, four o'clock in the morning when the cheap flights are. Um, yes. <laughs> like, fuck the fuck carbon emissions. <laughs> <laughs> All inclusive. I've got my band. <laughs> yeah, I've got priority boarding. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I hope we do. I hope, I hope we all realise that we can all make a, you know, a, even the smallest step, we all do something that we can yeah. kind of create a, a nicer place to live in, really. I am a hippie at heart. Yeah, this is the thing. I can, I can tell. I'll tell. So, look, it's been a, a it's pleasure. It's been ages as well. Are you going to put this whole thing on? Yeah. Are you? You're not yeah. going to edit it? Nah. Are <laughs> you going to edit it? I'll have, I'll have a look. It's so long now. I can't bother. <laughs> this is a lovely way to end this. Thanks. It's so long. It'll take me ages. <laughs> have you ever edited audio files? No, but guess what? You've got loads of time in your hands now. I have, but I've just taken up jogging. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I've got this all-in-one leotard thing. Oh, like, oh lovely. Fluorescent one, lovely. you know, headband and all sorts. But um, I'll have a look at it, so don't worry. I'm, <laughs> I've got a, no, you won't. Like, you bloody won't. You, you know, I don't. I just put them out there. But uh, now it's been a great chat. I think we've had a, a, a great talk anyway. It's been great catching up with you. We should do it no, again. It's been lovely, uh, Jonesy. Yeah, let's do it. And not we don't always have to record it. We can just like have a chat. Have a chat. Absolutely. Did you, yeah. know, did you, did you know that? We don't have to. It's not always, it's not always got to be content, you know? That's true. Just, we just have normal <laughs> talks with people. Yeah, that, you're absolutely right. I don't actually just talk to people. Everything's recorded. People must hate me, you know, every time. I do talk to people uh, while uh, recording them. Okay. But it, it has been great. So, look, before you That's go, though, lovely. where, where mm-hmm. can people still catch up with you online uh, it, on their social media channels? Yeah, um, Instagram is the one that I'm on the most. Um, just my name, Sukhojla, S-E-K-H-O-J-L-A. Um, yeah, I mean, that will kind of, that's where I'm going to keep people updated about, um, and Twitter as well, updated about when the shows start up and et cetera, et cetera. And one of these days I will sit down and write a newsletter. I've been, you know, threatening to do that for months, but I will sit down, write a newsletter, let everybody know what's happening. So yeah, um, if you've got any issues with tickets, just DM me, I'll, I'll send you the details of the person that you need to get in touch with. So don't worry not run off with your money or anything it's all uh, it is it is going ahead i keep trying to i keep saying to people it's not because they're like oh we're really sorry you talk get cancelled and i'm like postponed <laughs> yeah, it's not cancelled. Postponed. <laughs> yeah it's w- postponed. words mean something yeah you, know. you, you can't literally run off anywhere though could you at the moment there's no flight well, no so. i couldn't where would i go yeah where would i go oh, so you, oh, oh I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy the special range and asda like you know that's, yeah. that's where your money's going taglatelli um <laughs> <laughs> your money's safe people your money's safe yeah. Suk so, an absolute pleasure and I'm going to keep Thank it all so in much. and um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use these little snippets as promos oh, great great I can't wait <laughs> no it, it's been it's been fantastic uh, thanks for coming on and uh, like you said we'll do another chat we won't record it we'll just catch up yeah, and see how you're doing yeah. alright and uh, take cool. care and all the best thank you so much take care mate <laughs> I'm going to end it now.